Let's talk about server-side template injection, or SSTI. This is the kind of attack that's going to involve template engines. A template engine allows developers to create static template files that can be reused by the application. So think of like a web page that dynamically reflects your username, or an email that dynamically reflects the receiver's name. Uh, an SSTI vulnerability is going to occur when the application unsafely embeds user input into the template that then gets interpreted by the engine rather than just being passed as data. So if I were to just pass any old string in here, you can see that the data has been reflected onto the page. And if we look at Zap Proxy, we can see we've got the uh, data we sent. That is then being reflected into um, where is it? right there <laughs> to the page. And if we look at the source code, what's going on here is we got this conditional that says if our request method is a post, then this variable called name is gonna be passed the uh, data that's within that name parameter into th this HTML code right here. And then from there we have a variable called template that's being passed. Uh, the name variable right here and then we've got this render template string function that's being passed to the template variable this function right here is actually where our vulnerability is going to arise because the function is being passed user input by a variable that hasn't properly sanitized characters that are used by the uh, template te template engines syntax and we can uh, test for this by even something like this and you can see rather than like literally reflecting the string it's accepted it as like the local syntax of the engine and so it's just multiplying seven times seven and there's a couple of other template temp template engines that use a uh, similar syntax to this so to narrow this down for an engine like um, Jinja 2 uh, you could do something kind of like this we put the 7 in quotes so that it gets rendered as a string in Jinja 2. And now we've just multiplied the string of 7 7 times. So we got 7 7s. Um, you'll find um, web frameworks like Flask or Django that use Jinja 2. But there's some other uh, template engines like Twig, which is another Python based one that has a similar syntax to Jinja 2. But it's not going to do something like that that's going to turn a. Uh, a number into a string just by using quotations like that. So there's a couple things you're going to have to consider if you if you uh, are, are feel like a web application might be using a template engine of sorts. But now that we know well the the one that's being used, we know what syntax we can you we can do. And from here, I'm going to try to find out what global variables are accessible by the application. And here we can see we got a dict that is full of all the global variables, but the one that's of interest to me at the moment is the import variable. And if you don't know anything about uh, Python, this is what's going to allow us to import other modules. And basically I'm thinking about importing the OS module so that we can get remote code execution. It's going to look something kind of like this. I bubbles and then do built-ins I believe and I say import OS and I do p open and run where am I right and then I gotta use the read function so that it actually renders on the page and now we can see the name of the user that is running the application currently so now that we've got remote code execution, let's uh, see if we can get a shell and start up a netcat listener. We pretty much just use as a template the command that I just sent, but now instead I'm gonna netcat call my local host because I'm just running this locally. And there we go, we just made a connection back to our netcat listener. We can say, who am I? We can even go back to the root directory and look at stuff there. We've just got a full remote code execution even. Pretty cool. Um, that's, that's SSTI. It's 
not a super common vulnerability anymore because it's so easy to mitigate as long as you just um, sanitize user input or just don't allow user input to be uh, rendered by a function uh, such, such as this one. But um, anything that could potentially lead to RCE is at least of interest to me, so uh, it's, wor it's worth knowing somewhat. So there you go.